it was going to be a big brain. Well, we want to welcome everybody in person and those online. Yeah. We are so thankful to have you joining us today for fellowship and service. And then, prayer. Oh, God, the emphasis of prayer. Prayer is a 24-hour job. Amen. Prayer should never leave us. So we do have a pre-service prayer at Open to All at 9.30 here at the church on Sunday. And then we do have a prayer chain for every need. You can text or email, and that goes to Catherine. And believe me, this week we've had quite a bit of a lot of needs for prayer. Yeah, that was great. And then on Wednesday, we have the Oasis. It yeah. ain't the restaurant, it's the Oasis here. <laughs> <laughs> it's God's Oasis. Yes, it yeah. is, definitely. <laughs> At 5.30, and if you know what, this last Wednesday we had, in the midst of how busy we get and how quick our brains are overworked, it was wonderful to come this past Wednesday and just sit quietly in his presence. It was wonderful. And then, of course, our tithes and offerings are very important as we worship the Lord through a giving heart. And there are three ways to give, online by mail. And then we have a wonderful drop-off box back there on the desk. So there is always room for friends. I keep a bunch of brochures. And when I have the opportunity, I'll walk up to the person, introduce myself, and how would you like to know about our church? And I give them a brochure. And it doesn't give me time to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I just slip right in. <laughs> and next week, uh, September the 4th, can you imagine September? Oh, gee. Only so many more days for Christmas. Shopping day? Yeah, shopping day. I walked into Costco and I already saw Christmas items there and I thought, good grief. <laughs> Jeez. We're going to have a healing service yeah. for those needing a touch from Jesus. And that's an awesome time. It's amazing what God has done for various people who are here for the healing service. Well, before our tag team comes up, I asked our Heavenly Father this morning, I said, I want to be able to read something that will inspire all of you and also the tag team and not knowing what they're going to be speaking on it's even better because we'll be surprised and the title is God knows what's best trust the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding remember many times you think you can figure it out forget it the problem with this world isn't that it doesn't fit. Oh, it will do for now, but it isn't tailor-made. We were made to live with God, but on earth we live by faith. We are made to live forever, but on this earth we live but for a moment. We must trust God. We must trust not only that he does what is best, but that he knows what is ahead. Ponder the words of Isaiah 57, 1 through 2. The good man perish, the godly die before their time, and no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to realize that God is taking them away from the evil day ahead. For the godly who die shall rest in peace. My, what a thought. God is taking them away from the evil days ahead. Could death be God's grace? Could the funeral wreath be God's safety ring? As horrible as the grave may be, could it be God's protection from the future? Trust in God. Jesus urges, trust in me. And with that, we have our wonderful tag team coming forward. Yeah. Donna was right. Um, God does know best, and you'll yeah. see that that actually comes right into this message. Every time I get up here, I feel uh, so 
unworthy to bring the word of God. And uh, I think that's a good thing because who is worthy to bring the word of God to anybody? All right. All right. I say sometimes, you know, there's great men of God, but I don't know if there's truly any great men of God. There's just a great God, and there's weak men who try to love that God. Amen. So, uh, just good morning, everybody. It's good to be here with everyone. It's good to be a part of this church family, to share with you guys, uh, encourage each other. Even before I got up here, I felt encouraged. I don't know her name, but the lady right here was praising God, and I did. I felt a little bit down. And... The topic is loving God and loving others, and I thought, how beautiful is this? Her loving God in front of me, without even trying to love me, she's just loving God, but it's affecting me, and it's causing me to love God. And then Chuck came up to me and many others, and I mean, when Chuck put his hand on me, I just felt God encouraging me to move forward with this. So, um, you know, what happens in these walls or in this church isn't familiar to a lot of the world. That's true. as a matter of fact, I was in McDonald's like two weeks ago, and I was in the drive-thru, and there was a silver car ahead of me. And uh, <clears throat> on the left side, it had a sticker, and it was all red, and in white letters, it said, Suffer. And then right on the right side, it had a black one, and it was written in white, and it said, Honk, if you live in fear of what you have become. And I thought, oh, wow. I, I really, at first I just thought, is this a joke, you know? And I thought, oh, maybe it's an emo kid driving this. And I looked, <laughs> I looked ahead and it wasn't. Wow. It was an elderly gentleman, uh, well put together, seemingly well put together. Yeah. Looked like he was somebody's grandpa. I just would never have thought. And, uh, oh, yeah, I might need that. <laughs> uh, there's a world in desperate need of love, uh, love for that gentleman. A kind of love that tells those two stickers where to stick it. Um, <laughs> seriously, I mean, suffer, maybe for the cause of Christ temporarily, but only for an eternal destiny with our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Amen. Fear, perfect love cast out fear. He tells us, angels tell us to fear not. That has nothing to do with, with what God would have us. Yeah. Uh, this leads me into today's topic, loving God and loving others. It's already up there. Loving God sounds so nice, doesn't it? Like something we want to do. Uh, Loving others, maybe not always so much. And uh, even when when I was pondering this, I thought one sounds more like a job than a joy. And then Mike sent me the picture, and it's a beautiful picture. (laughs) But I can't help but think that one looks like a chore, and the other one just looks like a (laughs) green (laughs) position. But you know, we serve a God of order, even the title itself wow. is in God's perfect order, loving God and loving others, which kind of ties into what Donna said, because she said God knows best, and it's only when uh, it's only when you love God first that you can love others best. That's right. Um, That's good. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's Some people might even say that sounds cliche, or how is that possible? Like, I don't know God, but I love somebody. Like, how can you tell me that I need to truly love God in order to truly love anybody else that doesn't make any sense? And I'd say that's a good question, but I'd say there's a good answer. All right. And uh, the answer would be this, that wife, husband, sister, father, daughter, whatever title you placed on them, before they were ever any of those things, they were God's and are God's children. So God knows how to love them best before you ever could. And not only that, but God knows you more than you know you or me more than I know me. And that's why we have to tap into him because he knows knows us inside and out. And him being the perfect, yeah, him being the perfect parent, he knows his children best. You know, nobody could love my daughter or sons better than I could. I mean, other than God, but I'm just saying, but we're all God's children. So who knows how to love us best? God does. So that's whose heart we have to talk, tap into. And I say that, too, because we're selfish by nature. If I could prove it, uh, well, I could prove it if I could take a picture, a panoramic view of everybody right now, including myself, and put it up on screen. I'm sure Mike could do it, but I'm not going to pressure him to make that happen right now, but he's suave with that stuff. But if we did, and it was up there, who's the first person you're going to look for? I know it's... I, you, look, you're so you look for me. There's me. There's me. So... Huh. Loving others is, uh, so even before I go any further, in preparing this message, uh, God will use your time, talent, and resources if you let him, but sometimes yeah. it's hard bringing those things before him. Yeah. Um, in order to bring you the little bit of message that I'm bringing you today, which is literally just crumbs mm. uh, of fresh bread, mm. uh, when, I think of, uh, when I think of this place, I think of uh, 
the loaves of bread that come out of here all the time. And I thought it was so hard for me to take and spend time with God. Not that I didn't love it when I got there, but to bring myself before God, to, to, to deny the world and the flesh and the busyness that I had going on so that I could spend time with God to bring you guys something only leaves me in awe of what Dana and Cheryl and many bring you guys daily. And it just leaves me in appreciation for what this church uh, and, and many in here, yeah. Mary, Catherine, just Mike, uh, many, many, yeah. Laura, I, I, I just yeah. keep going. Yeah. Um, I got to figure out where I'm at. One second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all of these messages I've taken is what I need to hear, what I need to change, and what I need to do. I need to purposely take and spend time with God in order that he can fill me with love for people. When you spend time with God, you begin to love what God loves, and he loves people. Mm. He loves yeah. souls. When you draw close to God, he's going to draw you to people. You can't love God and not love people. You cannot do that. It, it's impossible. If you don't love people, I would question how much your love for God is. Or, so, and so we said in the beginning that the title was in the right order. So let's take a look at scripture to see what I'm saying is true. Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Second, it's equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. <laughs> in the Old Testament, it actually didn't say mind. So in Deuteronomy 6, 5, it didn't say mind, but Jesus inserted this. But he can insert whatever he likes whenever he wants because he's God. Amen. And he inserted it, and I'm glad that he inserted it because the world is constantly grabbing for our minds yeah. through our phone, through TV, through that thing in our pockets. Mm -hmm. It's constantly buying for our time. It, it's it's yeah. reaching for us. And we serve a God who asks us to engage our minds in loving him. So it's not – maybe this sounds familiar. Just turn your mind off or – uh, just relax, open up your mind, and see what happens, see what enlightenment comes in. Something's <laughs> going to come in, but it's not going to be anything that brings any eternal value. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. Cool. It's picking up God. So loving God with all your mind is not laying your intelligence or intellect in the dust, but it's actually picking up God's eternal truths. Uh, his truths don't change, which is why he's the solid rock. He hasn't lost his sharpness. He doesn't change over time. Let's move to the second command, which is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. We're going to talk about this by looking at a further text in Luke 10, where a man asks Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus responds with maybe the most well-known story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And even though it's in here, in the same Bible, it says mine, but I looked up in Deuteronomy, it doesn't say mine. He does say it in here when he's asked the question, but when I looked it up, just to be sure, it's, it's not in Deuteronomy. So I think they put it here maybe because it was also. Right. So one day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and live. Uh, this man, by calling him teacher in the beginning, was just almost in a way mocking him. And... Uh, Hmm. he's asking him what he needed to do to inherit eternal, eternal life, but yeah. by works. He said, what must I do? There you go. What can I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. And so Jesus responded and answered in the way he asked the question, oh, you want to do something to make it to heaven? You want to work to heaven? Oh, that's easy. Just love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love others as yourself, and you'll go. His response, it was almost like, Jesus is sarcasm because I'm sure he said it with a twinkle in his eye because there's no way he knew that this man could never fulfill the law. Jesus is the one that came to fulfill the law. So, uh, yeah. Luke, so the next one. This man asked, so the man asked, who is my neighbor? But by asking this, he was really just asking, he's looking for loopholes. Whatever you do, work it, at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Oh, this actually... Back up one. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> oh, the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Right. So the man was almost drawing lines in the sand. Mm. He wanted to know what the cutoff point was. Jesus crossed lines in order to love people, and this yeah. guy was saying, what lines right. can I put up uh, in order not to love mm. others? Okay. Mm. The road from Jerusalem... Oh, yeah. Jesus replied with a story 
A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant, a Greek, a Levite, walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the, on the other side. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho is about 17 to 18 miles, and it was known as very rough terrain. It was known as terrain that people would get robbed on. There was caves, uh, and the elevation, this is crazy too, I, I couldn't believe this. Jericho is the lowest land elevation place on the planet. I thought, that is amazing. Like, that is just, of course God put that in his story. You know what I mean? I mean, Jerusalem is a mountain on a hill, so it, uh, the man, well, the, the man that got attacked, it says which way he was going, but we're, what we're about to read, we don't know which way the, the priest and the Levite were going. Um, Jericho is 846 feet below sea level, and Jerusalem is 2,474 feet above. And so in that 17 miles, I mean, you're either climbing or rolling down in a sense. Um, so 31, by the... By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant, a Greek Levi, walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Um, then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Wow. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds. Actually, before I go any further, I want to talk about why they may, may have passed him by. Okay. We don't know, and it doesn't say, and we don't know which way they were going, but if the priest was going from... Jericho to Jerusalem, he could have been going to serve his two weeks in the temple, which they looked forward to. They would tell all their friends about it. Yeah. I'm going to serve my two weeks. So to go over and help that man would to possibly be to defile himself because the man, if the man was dead, he would have to be, you know, defiled for you know That's two weeks true. or whatever. But if he got blood on him, it was the same thing. Mm. The Levite, he could have assumed that the priest ahead of him that was walking ahead of him had already checked this guy out, that it was all kosher, and huh. that he didn't need to do anything. Okay. Or it could have been, because I talked about this road was road, it was known for people robbing people. Uh -huh. A common thing to do would be to lay on the ground, yeah. and when people come over to help you, huh. you get yeah. up and attack them. So well. there was many reasons. We don't know what the reasons were, but again... Uh, and we can't get too deep into this. There's literally messages that are hours and hours long on this, and I'm trying to squeeze this into a couple minutes. So God help me. Uh, oh, you're doing good, Dave. But, uh, ultimately, ultimately, they represent everything that can't help us. And if we were to get deeper, I, yeah. one of them is the law and works and some other things. But uh, maybe check that out in, in your spare time. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Mm. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, Greek, two denarii. A denarius was equivalent to a laborer's full day's wage, telling wow. him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay it the next time I'm here. Hmm. Uh, it says it says the despised Samaritan because the Samaritan was considered a half breed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jews hated the Samaritans, and it was vice versa. As a matter of fact, uh, when when Jesus was telling this story to the Jew, to the the, the law the lawman, um, the guy probably assumed that the robbers were Samaritans. Mm -hmm. So the last person that would have been picked to stop and help would have been a Samaritan. Yeah. I feel like the man Jesus was probably telling the story to probably hated Samaritans. Uh, <laughs> you know, and you know the Samaritan could have said no because technically it was his enemy. Yeah. And how much more so God and or Jesus being the good Samaritan, he could have said the same thing to humanity. Yeah. You're my enemy. You want nothing yeah. to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. Why should I save you? Notice the Good Samaritan had wine, oil, and bandages, which, yeah. which also represent things we don't have time for. Uh, but notice how this man seemed to have all the right things in order to help. The wine, wow. the oil, the bandages, mm. as if he was specifically searching for someone to care for. Mm. Jesus used the parable. And you know what? Actually, in many places in Luke, it says uh, this is a parable. This is the one time it actually doesn't say. Yeah. We don't know. This could have been a true thing. As a matter of fact... Jesus could have been talking to one of the guys that passed by on the road. In my mind, I was thinking that. He could have been talking to one of those ones that passed by. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, 
He showed a man loving his enemy. Do you want to love others more than spend time loving God? He will use all he can of you for others. Is there a lack of love in your life? Let God fill that cup only he can fill. And he doesn't yeah. say when halfway, but he just fills, fills it to overflow yeah. so that the people around you, it flows into their lives as well. Mm. A double portion, more than enough. Mm. We have a God that's more than enough. Yes, yes. yes. yes he is. The Samaritan lifted the man up on his own donkey. Mm. God lowered himself to die on a tree in order to lift man up to heaven with him. Mm. And that was a picture of what this man on the donkey did. He, he brought himself yeah. down and he put this man up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to quickly read you a letter. I'm going to quickly read you a letter that someone gave me in 2017 at the end of a stay uh, in a nine-month treatment facility. Mm. When you listen to this letter, I want you to listen for the need of love in the human heart. Mm. And he just came up to me and gave this to me. He was... He was uh, the closest friend with me there, and I look back and I think, man, I wish I would have shown him more of the love of God and not just talked about some of it, because I don't think he'd be writing me a letter quite like this if I had shown him the love of God I probably should have. As I get closer and closer to leaving this place, <clears throat> and I think of the guy in the car that was ahead of me at McDonald's when I read this. I think of the heart in this place. As I get closer and closer to leaving this place, and there's only five sentences I'm not reading. That's because they're... <laughs> some of these words are... Curse words that I'm going to, okay. yeah. As I get closer and closer to leaving this place, the thought of being back out on the street scares me and gives me anxiety. I want to be back out, but what am I going to, what am I going to do? I haven't lived a normal life in so long. I'm not even sure I remember how to. Wow. I don't have very many skills. I'm starting all the way from the beginning yet once again. To be 100%, I'm not even sure I'm ready to be out on the streets again. Mm. I have so much doubt and so many what ifs. The last few nights I've been lying awake asking myself all these questions like, what if I don't get to be an Ethan and Athena's life? Or what if they don't want me to be a part of their lives? It scares me. Mm. Me knowing that this could happen. What if I don't get to be a part of Emma's life either? Then what do I do? What may my purpose be in life? Would I run back to my old life? There are so many different things that could happen. If things go wrong, what then? Mm. What was the point in doing all this? Crap. Going through what I've been through in this hell hole, I want to use each and every day. I've been dreaming about it, and I think about it all the time. Wow. I long for it, yet it makes my stomach turn. It's disgusting knowing what I've done to my family and still want to use that stuff. After everything I've done, people I've heard, I still have this feeling and thought about filling the needle full of that and poisoning my body. Mm. What do I do with all this? Mm. I wish this place would make me so I'm not an addict anymore. Mm. I wish it could take the sickness out of me. Mm. God mm. forbid. Sometimes I pray and ask God to take all the bad thoughts mm. away, but they still come, some worse than others. Why does he not answer me? I have no clue. I'm not good enough. I see how some people talk about his love, and that's when I thought of me. Mm. He must have just been talking about it. How he talks to them, and I don't get it. Mm. Is he real, or has he forgotten about me? I'm tired of not being sure. I feel very alone and lost. There isn't any light. I'm curled up in a ball, and I don't know what to do next. Should I stay here and feel sorry for myself, or do I make a move and go with it and don't look back, and whatever happens, happens? Bobby. Mm. so I'm going to say something that's a little bit hard to hear but if you're saved it's for the glory of God and yeah. others it's not about us anymore whether you're a doctor, you're a painter or a bus driver those are only tools in your life they are not your life your life is first to God and then to others use the tools he's given you to reach into the lives of others like Bobby's who are desperately looking for answers that the world does not have give them Christ, give them love and give them all you got and if you're lacking in your love for others, may I suggest you're lacking in love for God, the last page. And if that's true, and you want to love more, or love God more, then think and ponder on the loveliness of God, because he is altogether lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You do nothing to make a sunset beautiful, but mm. take it in. Mm. You just look at it, yep. and it leaves you in awe. And it's the same thing with God. If your heart's been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, then all you need to do is bring the loveliness of God in front of you and your heart will be regenerated. It was like me looking at this lady in front of me praising God. It just regenerated me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he'll regenerate you first to fill you with the love for him, for God, the adoration for God. Mm -hmm. But then that spills into the love that you have for others. So that's why I say it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So You know, when I even read that loving God and loving others, you can just follow the first one. And the rest of it will follow. You can't oh, help yeah. but to love others. You can't yeah, yeah. help yeah, yeah. but to love others. They're his, right. they're, they're his kids. Yeah, yeah. How does that song go? How will they know us? That's right. How will they know we are Christians? That's by our right. what? By our love. By our love. Yes. Let
Lastly, Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It's working for the Lord, not for human masters. You know, I, I used to hate that word, master. But I've been using it a lot lately to shoot down the arrows of the enemy in my life when things yeah. start creeping in. Because I'm like, no, I'm somebody's. And I'm starting to like that word master. Yeah. Like, no, I have a master. Come on. I'm not mastered by anything. But uh, but just like God is the perfect parent, he's also the perfect, ma uh, perfect master. Yeah. Imagine your kids came to you saying, I'm willing to do anything you want. Wow. I'm willing to give up everything, all the all the thoughts and dreams and everything, and I'll do whatever you say. What parent in their right mind is going to say, oh, finally I got them. This is it. You know, get a pen and paper. I mean, we got plans for you guys. No. A good parent is going to pour everything good into them. And when you bring yourself before Almighty God as his child, he can do nothing but pour goodness into you because you're coming to him as that servant. Yes. Amen. Do you want a life of ease, church? Church, if we were saved, if we're saved, we have an eternity of ease ahead of us. Yeah. Strive to show others the love of Christ, and not just what the cross means, but what does the cross mean to you, Dad, yeah. fathers? What does Christ mean to you, Mom, yeah. mothers? Yeah. Yeah. I pray as we follow after Christ that many will be won over for his love for them. Remember, it wasn't nails that held him to the cross. It was love for you and for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity to share. I'm looking forward to hearing from our brother Mike, who's now about to come up and yeah. always has such great teachings, and yeah. I get so much out of it. He's been an example in yeah. my life. Amen. We could leave now and be content. We did really, really well. All right, so I wanted to share real quick. I have an amazing wife. She is stunningly beautiful. My mother's a very close second. Tammy is the most beautiful one in this room. Over 18 years ago, I shared with Tammy a decision I made when I got married. Before we got married, excuse me. Christ had to be the center of our relationship. I have to love him more than I love her. Yes. Because if we don't, where's our foundation? Yeah. Um, before the service started, Laura mentioned something actually about the rock, and it just it was interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Laura. Yeah. Just, um, so loving God, loving people is the foundation of what the Bible talks about. So we're going to look about uh, talk about the Ten Commandments. All right. So Exodus and Deuteronomy. <clears throat> are the two uh, scriptures in the Bible that talk about the Ten Commandments. And many of us, if not all, everybody here is familiar with this. Uh, you should have no God before me. Don't make yourself a carved image. Uh, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Uh, remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Yeah. Honor your mom and dad. Don't kill. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't lie to people. Yeah. Don't covet other people's stuff. In its simplest terms, is the Old Testament a history lesson? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's also a record of mankind's journey following God through a set of rules, regulations, and requirements to help people get ready for Jesus yeah. for a field of life. Yeah. So three times Jesus referred to the necessity of keeping my commandments. So John 14, 15. <laughs> says, if you obey me, obey my command. Yes. If you will, excuse me, if you love me, obey my commands. John 14, 21, those who accept, accept my commandments, obey them, are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. Yes. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. These statements are then connected with Jesus' words in John 13, 34. <clears throat> a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Yeah. So did Jesus' commandments replace the Ten Commandments? I gotta confess something to you all. As I was putting this message together, I had a mindset for a while that um, yeah, the Ten Commandments over here, but Jesus came on, on, on the stage and uh, um, he basically 
condense them. Uh, um, now we only have two commandments. And as I'm putting this message together, I realize that's not necessarily the case. So some people believe that Jesus came to free us from a restrictive commandments of the old covenant by replacing them with a simple commandment to love. Were the Ten Commandments really superseded and replaced by a new commandment of love? The commandment to love is not a new thing. Let's consider three points to help understand what the truth really is. And real quick, I want to share is what if I had this mindset, I'm sure at least one or more people probably had this mindset as well. God gave Old Testament Israel direct instruction on how to live. So Leviticus 19.18 says, You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against children of your, of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So God speaking through Moses commanded the Israelites to show love to each other. Many older, excuse me, many other Old Testament scriptures talk about love, both God's love and the necessity for people to love him and others. Okay? So Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, excuse me, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, yeah. with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Deuteronomy 7, 8 through 9. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep you, the, or excuse me, would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out of mighty hand mm -hmm. and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh the king. Yeah. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God and faithful, God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. The point is the love was not a new concept revealed by Jesus. Come on, right. mm. The Ten Commandments at their heart and core are all about love. Mm -hmm. Matthew 22, 35-40. And I believe uh, David talked about this already. Mm -hmm. Then one of them, a lawyer, yeah. he asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the key, key phrase in this is the last sentence. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. They were trying to tempt Jesus, declaring uh, one commandment is more important than the other. And Jesus saw right through it right away. Jesus showed that what was more important was the intent of the commandments. Yeah. Right. right. That's Not right. one individual right. command. Right. It was the intent. Oh. There we go. All right. So I'm going to back up here a little bit. So Jesus answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Just bringing it back. Jesus was simply quoting what had already been revealed hundreds of years earlier through Moses. Okay. So the overall intent of the Ten Commandments is to teach us how to show love. Yeah. So getting back to the Ten Commandments. So the first four the first four commandments were to teach us how to love God. Yeah. yeah. To love him. Don't have a carved image. Don't take his name in vain. Yeah. Uh, remember the Sabbath. The last six, the basic intent of these commandments was to show love to other people. If you're loving somebody, you're not going to cheat on your wife. You're not going to um, dishonor right. your mom. You're not going right. to kill That's people. Right. You're, you're not going to yeah. do this stuff. So, the commandments define love. Romans 13, 10. Love 
does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus' new commandment was the how-to factor. It was the how to do it. A closer look of the verse makes it clear. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Love wasn't new, but Jesus' example was love in action was. So Jesus came to the earth to do so many things. And one of the things was to give living, breathing life, a breathing example of what perfect love looked like. Through his life, he showed what it means to perfectly love people, love God. The gospel accounts of his life give us so many examples of his perfect love, which culminated in a sacrificial death for us. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life ransom for many. Yes. And one that many of us know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave right. his only begotten son, that who shall not believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So many of you know my previous career. Um, I was a firefighter EMT. Um, a lot of our calls that we responded to were medical calls. And uh, there were some people we'd respond to quite frequently, two, three times a week. And there was one individual that we would respond to, and uh, um, he was a convicted pedophile, older gentleman, 75. Mm. And uh, his issue was respiratory distress, severe COPD, and we'd, we'd respond to him and uh, go up there, get his vitals, figure out what's going on, give him breathing treatment, um, and treat him where we can. If we can't, load him on the cot and get him going. Well, yeah. we realized, hey, we need to get going. Yeah. So we were helping him on the cot and, and just making sure, hey, you comfortable? And so, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, get him down. As I'm loading him up on the ambulance, says, hey, how you doing? I don't remember his name. How you doing, Tom? I says, good, good. Well, I hope you have a better day. Take care of yourself, okay? Sure. I close the door and not even so much the closed door. My partner looks at me. Why are you being so nice to him? He's a pedophile. Well, yeah, what has he done to me? Um, now, this is our job. We got to be respectful and nice, but it's more than that. Right. It's way beyond that. Okay. Um, yeah. It's not my place to judge him. Amen. Um, am I going to take him home and introduce him to my kids? No. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But uh, <clears throat> give him the respect that he needs. He, he's having a really crappy day. People have crappy days. Meet them where they're at. Love yeah. on them where they're um, at. Good. Good. Amen. Mm. So in loving God, he wants us to love him with our whole being in every possible way. God's own son taught us to love God, the Father, with everything we are. Yeah. Amen. Saying this was the first and greatest of all the commandments. Amen. Lastly, Amen. the most loving thing we can do for others is to love God more than we love them. Yes. For if we love God most, we're going to love others best. Amen. Thank you all. I appreciate you coming. Um, taking your time out. Um, can I pray for you all before we leave? Amen. So, well, Father, we just uh, we thank you for this time. I uh, I ask that as uh, as everyone leaves today, that uh, they take these words to heart and that yes, they find um, as as they're loving loving God and spending time with Him, that uh, you show them ways to love people, random people, people they know, and uh, bless their days, yes, God. bless their families. As they venture off this week, Lord, that um, these words would not go out, but they would just continue to resonate and permeate, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for coming, everybody. Any good to hear these two brothers share? Yeah, yeah Lord. Yeah. What you got? I need to share something. Okay. Is that okay. Yeah. Come here, Laura. You need a microphone, I'm sure of it. Sure. And 
There you go. I can get here. I just, I have to share this. Many of you know that I was the deputy sheriff for years. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you, I booked in a guy that murdered four people. And the next morning, he said, I got to see that woman before I leave here because he was being transported back to North Carolina. And I said, okay. So I went to see him and he looked at me in the eye and he said, you're the only person that ever treated me like a human being. Mm. Wow. Mm. So treat people like a human being. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. good, Laura. Thank Amen. you, God. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. It was good. Yeah. Good. Really good stuff today. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't need it, but I'll just yeah, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta start messing with it. But no, thank you for joining us today. And yep. these guys did a great job. Yes, they did. Yeah. yeah. I know they don't want them, but pat them on the back. Yeah. 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 Amen. So enjoy your day. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see Wednesday, Bible study. And then next week, healing service. Yes. So yeah, so invite your friends. If there's anybody you know that needs an emotional healing or a spiritual healing or a physical healing. Yes. Spiritual meaning they need to know Jesus. Okay. Right. Amen. <laughs> you know what emotions mean. All of us have had some stress issues. But um, but yeah, but please invite your friends and you come expecting. And I, I just have one request for everybody. Will you uh, commit to, as much as it comes to mind, pray for that service this yeah. week. Mm -hmm. Pray that everybody who comes through those doors will get, get exactly what they need from Jesus. Yeah. Will you do, will you do, raise right. your hand if you'll do that as it comes Amen. to mind. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Amen. Amen.